this is what we're this is what we'll be looking at whenever we start with a brand new document that we want to turn into a woodpecker template right so at this point we're interested in turning this into a template as quickly as possible and as seamlessly as possible so what we'll do is again launch woodpecker and you'll see that there's a there's a sort of empty state here because we don't have any fields created for this this document yet so what we're going to do whenever we start with a brand new document is click on this analyze current document for fields button which is woodpecker's auto template engine and I'll explain exactly what that's doing here in a second. So if we click on it, basically what it's doing is it's analyzing the document for um, terminology that it thinks is likely to change. So what, what, we're, what, what it does is cast a very wide net and it's looking for a couple of things. It's looking for anything that you've either tried to represent as a variable field, for example, you put brackets around something, you highlighted something, you underlined it, you put character carrots around it, whatever it is. It's looking for anything that is tried to be represented as a human, uh, hu human edited um, variable. It's also looking for anything that is, is a likely a variable piece of information, like people's names, dates, addresses, organization names, currencies, things like this. It also can parse hot docs and contract express templates if those are, are things that you happen to have. So what we're gonna look, what we're seeing now though is, is a list of things that it found uh, in the document that it thinks we might want to turn into uh, woodpecker fields. So what our job is now is to basically just go through each one of these and decide, do we want to turn this into a woodpecker field or do we not want to? Now what's important to realize is that auto template by no means is a one-stop shop that's gonna get 100% of the things that you hope it will. Um, it varies what it what it picks up. In general, what we say is it's going to pick up 70 to 80 percent of the things that you would like to turn into fields, of the variables you'd like to turn into fields. That's okay because after the fact, we're going to be able to add on additional custom fields and do fancy things like conditional logic and formula calculations. It can't do it can't parse a conditional clause. It can't parse a parse a formula calculation. But what it will do is it'll cover all of the sort of tedious parts. Um, that are simple, right? Like dates and names and addresses and things like this. So the idea now, again, is to go through each one of these suggestions and accept or reject it. So if we go to this first one, February 4th, 2020, if we click on one of these arrows here on the left, it's gonna go and highlight that suggestion for us. So we can actually see, okay, well, is this something that I wanna turn into a, um, into a field? And in this case, this seems like it's referring to the execution date. So actually that's something I would like to turn into a, into a field. So I'm gonna actually leave it the way it is. The way that this works is that by default, these are all being accepted. These are all accepted suggestions. Let's go down to this next one, the Delaware General Corporation, and we'll uh, click on the arrow there. We can see that it highlights the suggestion for us, but it says Delaware General Corporation, and we can see it skipped law at the end or it missed law at the end. But obviously this isn't something that we probably wanna turn into a variable field because it looks pretty static to me. So what I'm gonna do is reject this suggestion. To reject the suggestion, I'm just gonna click on this trash can over on the right of it, and you can see that the whole thing becomes opaque. Another thing to, to think about is that you can see that it found four occurrences of Delaware General Corporation. If right now, if one of those is something that you do wanna turn into a field and three of them are not, you should reject the whole thing because the auto template um, isn't smart enough yet to, say, to be able to say, I would only like to create one of these instances. It, it's an all or nothing sort of a deal. So if, if you have a situation where there is one of the instances that you want and maybe the others you don't, reject the whole thing and then just create a custom field for it after the fact, which you'll, you'll, we'll see here in a second. So next, let's go down to board of directors. You're gonna see the same thing here. It doesn't look like something I wanna turn into a field, so I will also reject that. The rest of these in brackets here, those I'm gonna keep because I did those on purpose. Um, I wanna leave them uh, and create them as fields. Let's move down to company county though. You can see that this is something I highlighted. So I would also like to keep that. California though, also didn't, it's California Corporation's code. And this also looks like it's gonna be pretty static. So I'm gonna reject that suggestion. Finally, company zip, also something I highlighted. So I would like to keep that. So at this point, we're just gonna click create these fields. And what Woodpecker will do is, gonna, is go through the whole doc and create the fields out of the suggestions that we've accepted. Now, um, wh again, what's important to know is that it's gonna, it's gonna create all, of, all instances of each suggestion that you've accepted. Um, and we're gonna be left with a simple form over here on the right. <clears throat> So um, 
once this finishes here, we're going to end up with a simple form over on the right, like I mentioned. And what we can do then, or what we're going to want to do then, is sort of clean it up a little. So what Woodpecker does, or what the auto template engine does, is that when it finds these suggestions and creates fields out of them, it just names them whatever it found in the document. So for example, this 10 million is what it found in the document, but that's actually obviously not a very um, intuitive field name because I don't, you know, as a user of this template, I don't know what should go in here. That doesn't make any sense to me. So what I'm gonna wanna do is again, just kind of go through these and, and clean them up a little, maybe change some names that, that need to be changed. For this one, if I click the down arrow and click show instances, oh man, let's see. Let's try to reload this because I was in my old account again. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, let's try this again. So uh, I'm gonna go to this 10 million here, right? Um, and let's just make sure we're at the top here. I'm gonna go to this 10 million, and what I wanna do is I wanna see where this 10 million is being used, and I'm gonna click on this down arrow and click Show Instances, which is then gonna go highlight the instance of that field for me. So I could say, okay, well, this is, seems like it's referring to the number of shares of the corporation. So why don't I just title this number of shares so that it's a little more sensical. So if I go over to this edit menu over here on the right and click edit, if I change this to, I can change the name to let's say number of shares. And then if I click save, you're gonna see that over here on the left, the placeholder adjusts and we're good to go there. Let's go do the same thing for this one. We'll do a show instances, which again allows us to navigate between the instances of this field in the document. The little number next to each one of these fields indicates the number of instances of that field that are being used in the document. So again, this one's plus one, plus one, plus three, and you can navigate between those instances of the field by obviously doing that show instances button. Now this one obviously is referring to, looks like to be a par value. So what I wanna do here is do an edit on this, these three dots over here, and then change this to, let's just call it par value. And you're gonna see the placeholder adjust. Great. The rest of these look pretty good to me. I think that we're, you know, we're, that we, we've cleaned up the, uh, the field names effectively and this is, this is good to go. So in some cases you might be, you know, you might be done at this point and you would do, let's say a file save as, save this as certificate of incorporation master template. And then maybe we would save it to our document collection with the short, uh, shortcut here, this little shortcut icon. That's again, saves this template to the collection itself.